Hi, I'm Jeffrey Pickett. Welcome to Sports Night, your inside look at sports in Stoughton. Over the next couple of episodes, we'll be taking a look at the winter sports teams at Stoughton High School. And on today's episode, we'll also be taking a look back at 2013, the year that was in Stoughton sports. So I'm joined in studio by three members of the Stoughton High class of 2013. Josh Brown, who was my sidekick for a couple of years at Stoughton Patch and was a manager uh, for the basket boys basketball team and the boys baseball team. And Mike Cardoso, who also a member of the class of 2013, he was a wrestler and also on the boys track team and played soccer. And Pat Jackman, who was a four-year varsity baseball player, was on the indoor track team, and his senior year also played boys soccer and was Stoughton's 2013 Hockamock League Scholar Athlete. So thank you guys for uh, joining me. Uh, you're all off in the land of college now. Tell everybody where you're going. I'm going to Massachusetts Amherst. I'm at the University of New Hampshire. And I'm at uh, Northeastern. All right, well, thank you guys for joining me. Uh, I have uh, Pat, Mike, and Josh in today to talk about the winter season and some athletes that we should keep an eye on uh, this season going forward. So uh, let's start with uh, basketball, Josh. Uh, who are some boys basketball players that you, you know we should be paying attention to this season? Yeah, it's interesting because you kind of, they've been going through a, kind of a transition the last two years now after you know Aaron left. Um, you know, you lost Marcus. That was a big loss, um, but you still you have some key players there. You lost Morrow. You Mikey G, obviously a third year point guard already. He'll be big again for them. The captains, Stanley Seju, Joey Wilder, they'll be huge. They got to really kind of carry this team. But they they have some role players too. We saw Brandon Teixeira kind of step up and um, really kind of fill a void they needed, a scoring void. He stepped up big for them so far, and I think you know it's a, definitely a different kind of feel for them this year. But I think if they can kind of click as a team, they'll be a, a team who can make a pretty good run this year. And girls basketball, of course, you start with the captains, Kayla Motley and Ashley Medeiros. Motley is going to be a presence inside for the Black Knights. And, of course, Medeiros can, you know, is a pretty good shooter. Yeah, they're another, you know, we talked about boys basketball. They, they lost a lot. But um, they're another team. They're kind of a scrappy team. They have Ashley Madeira shooting. Kayla Motley can obviously grab rebounds for them. And um, they're a team, they're going to have to work out you know, some kinks early on. They're going to have to kind of get that chemistry because they're kind of a new team. But um, you know, they're another team. If they kind of play their game, Coach Sullivan does a great job with them. And if they can kind of develop that chemistry, I think they'll be a good, solid team this winter for Stoughton. And you also have to factor in uh, Leandra Busby, who uh, runs the point for the Black Knights and is doing a great job. She's the team's top scorer. So can look for her to be uh, potentially one of the breakout stars this winter for Stoughton Sports. And Mike, uh, talk about wrestling a little bit. That was a team that last year really had like a breakout season. You were a captain for them and young, young team last year. And this year they return uh, a lot of the wrestlers who helped uh, lead you guys to a quite impressive finish. Yeah, I mean, we only lost a couple seniors a majority of the team last year was even led by the younger kids. I mean, this year they have Devlin Carroll, Michael Carroll, the Leighton Twins, the Girolamo brothers, the Moan brothers, Buddha. I mean, they, they are led by young teams. Buddha, of course, Brian Nguyen. Brian Nguyen. Um, so, I mean, with that squad, I've already been to the first match. They won by a lot. They lost by one point to the number 14th team in the state. And, I mean, they're just a team to watch. They're... I'm predicting a few state champions this year. And Pat, you were on the indoor boys track team last yep. year. Who are, who are some members of that team and, and the girls team that you would pay attention to this uh, yep. this winter? Well, I think first of all, the whole team's going to be hungry after um, well, the guys' team because they had the three-way tie the 
um, title last year, so I think they'll be hungry for that. But on um, the hurling team, you have Elliston, uh, Alex Oliver, um, Kevin McDonald, John Eppenstein. They'll probably get a lot of points in that category, as they have in the past. And then the distance with um, David Lockhart, he'll, pe he'll pick up a lot of points. And then um, so with the addition of Samir Sophie, who's coming over from the spring, um, they should get a lot of points, long jump, and in the sprints as well. And you look at a Kevin Lucas with uh, shot put. Absolutely. The shot put, um, the, he should register a lot of points in there. He, as a sophomore, he improved greatly from freshman year, and I hope he, um, as a junior now, will pick up a lot of points there too. And you look at the, you know, the girls' side, you have captains like Shannon Barkey and Rachel Barkowski. Yeah, a lot of experience over there, and um, they really know how to run races well. As a lot of the, the distance comes a lot of strategy, and um, I think they should get a lot of points from them. Um, obviously, with Coach Clark's last um, go about, hopefully they can get some wins for him. And you're looking at you know some of the other sports, you have uh, swimming, which of course you have to start with a Hunter Goodrich, uh, who you look at the all-time leaders in you know each individual race at the on the board at the Stoughton High Gymnasium, and Hunter's name is pretty much in every single category. And he's a senior and has been a key contributor on that team for four years. You also have Zach Moynihan, uh, John Kerman, who's had a great start to the season. Dylan Freitas on the boys' side. On the girls' side, Megan Dixon, uh, Chelsea Morganelli, Kathleen Walsh, Sam Malley. So, you know, look for some improvements from swim this year. They have a lot of uh, great individual swimmers. Mm -hmm. uh, hockey, I think you have to start a net with hockey. Uh, looking at P.J. Sheehan, who yeah. last season, 918 saves in 20 games for P.J. He faced over 1,000 shots. I mean, it's amazing how much he gets, how, I mean, how, much, how many pucks he sees every game, and he turns away mm -hmm. over 90% of them. Yeah. I mean, I think that's a lot of mental toughness. I mean, he doesn't have many wins in the win column, but uh, as far as saves go, he's kind of in, in and out every game. Um, doing what he can to keep the, keep the team um, in, in games. And you have a lot of young players on the team, I mean, starting with his younger brother, Mark. Mm -hmm. uh, and you have uh, you know, Ben Litwack, mm -hmm. uh, defenseman, uh, John Lessa, and Owen Doherty. Um, a, you have a lot of uh, the captains. You have um, Brandon Lima, Drew DiStefano. Uh, they have some nice young talent on the, on the hockey team. So. They, you know, watch, watch for them to continue to improve as the season gets, uh, we get deeper into this season. Uh, we have also a girls hockey team yeah. in Stoughton. Mm -hmm. And, you know, Anna Russell, Alex Charette, uh, Gina McGahey, Al Alex Ploss, Sam Tullis. Uh, they're led by middle school teacher Rich Grasso. That's another, that's, an, that's kind of fun to see a team get built from the bottom up. You guys were in school when the volleyball team was Get, getting started, mm -hmm. so nice to see a, another program start from the bottom stages. Yeah. And yeah. you saw how quickly volleyball kind of went from, you know, starting off they didn't win too many games and how quickly they moved up to like a consistent tournament team. Mm -hmm. Ho hopefully that's something that um, girls hockey could do. They have a good coach with um, Grasso over there and they, they have some talent. As you read the names there, they're not, they're not, they're a team who can win games and um, hopefully soon they're, I know right now they're just a JV team, but hopefully they can move up, win some games and hopefully, uh, you know, play a couple tournament games. Gain some popularity in the school as well, maybe get some more people to join. Right, well, what's tough with, uh, with that particular sport is that the distance of the games, uh, they, they play a lot of their games in Dorchester. Uh, it, it's just not a, it, it's tough with, with track too. It's unfortunate because there's a lot of great, yeah. you know, track athletes. It's just that most of the meets are held in the Reggie Lewis Center, which isn't easy to get to. Yeah, exactly. On yeah. five o'clock on Thursday nights, you're not going to gain much of a crowd. But, right. Um, yeah, you make the most of it. Right. Uh, but you know, still, it's nice to nice to see uh, a lot of athletes, and you know, even you look at a sport like boys track, and you're missing a Malachi Baugh, uh, who yeah. set records for you guys last year. Absolutely. And, still have plenty of talent, mm -hmm. despite you know, the fact Definitely, that yeah. you lose a guy like him to yeah. injury. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're going to get into each team more in depth, went and caught up with some of the, the teams and their captains and coaches at practices this week. Let's start with Boys Wrestling, who they figure to be one of the top, if not the top team at Stoughton High this winter. I've been 
cautiously excited about this year. Um, I... And there's good reason for coach Mike Carroll to be optimistic about this season. The majority of the lineup, which led a resurgence of the Stoughton High Wrestling Program last season, returns this winter. And the fact that the freshmen and the sophomores, who played such a big role on last year's team, are another year older, should pay off. Last year I think we were really young, had a lot of freshmen, and physically we weren't just, just weren't strong enough to compete with some of the seniors out there. This year there, there's not a problem, and the Mount Hope tournament, the first tournament of the year, um, when I looked up and saw our team in fourth place behind uh, Franklin, who is ranked in the state, um, Shashin Tech, who is ranked, I think, seventh in the state, and then uh, Mount Hope, who is ranked number two in Rhode Island, and then us, I was like, really kind of, you know, made a little bit of an imprint. And then um, coming off our Marshfield quad and really, um, really uh, scoring huge on teams, and then our final match against Chelmsford, who's been known since I wrestled as one of the top teams in the state, uh, it came down to the last match and we lost by one point. So I know we're right there to, to hang and wrestle with the best in the state. So it's, it's pretty exciting. We've got like, pretty much our entire varsity lineup. has been doing just a great job all around. We've had a couple times we had to bump kids up, move kids around. And just everybody's been stepping up and just doing their work. I'm testing them. I'm testing them early. Uh, the Mount Hope tournament I knew was going to be tough. Test them early. Um, I saw a team like Chelmsford, I wanted to get in that quad. And I think the more they're, they're tested during the season, the sectional state tournaments just kind of, you know, they, they don't become as tough. Mike Carroll wrestled and previously coached at SHS. He's the team's new head coach after serving as a volunteer assistant last year. Brett Layton and Brandon Layton will be among the team's top performers, along with Rob Moan and Tom Moan, heavyweight Brian Nguyen, Carroll's sons Devlin Carroll and Mike Carroll, and Joey Gerolamo. Gerolamo's older brother, Frank, also will make a big impact this season. Well, I think Frankie Gerolamo is one of the kids that's going to come out. Um, he had a miss last year in his transfer from uh, Zavarian, um, so he's not really well known. Um, he's undefeated so far this year. Uh, I, I think he's just been uh, He's going to be an absolute surprise. I just hope to bring that extra voice and always, always be pushing my kids to the limit. I mean, because hard work really what where it all comes from, hard work and toughness, and, and we sure got it here. The Stoughton High wrestling team is a squad that can win now, and with a young core, is positioned to be successful in future years as well. A lot to look forward to, a lot to look forward to. They're all, hopefully, a lot of them, I, well, I see a lot of them placing in, placing in sectionals going on to states and, and for the years to come, there might be, a, might be a few winners. Yeah, I can absolutely see that. And the toughness in the room right now, in the freshmen, even if they're not doing amazing right now, you're going to tell they're going to be molded into some awesome athletes in the next couple of years. Coming off back-to-back -back seasons of qualifying for the postseason, the Stoughton High girls basketball team returns a young but promising roster this winter. After starting the season 0-2, the team is now 2-2 two two, coming out of the winter break. Well right now we're coming off of two back-to-back -back wins, so we're, we're feeling pretty good right now. Uh, we got off to a, a tough start, had some, um, some tough opponents, uh, didn't play as well as we hoped in the opening two games, but uh, we've had some practices since then, the kids have worked real hard. Uh, we're starting to get our offense on track a little bit. Uh, our offense tends to come from our defense, so when our defensive pressure is up, uh, we're doing a much better job on the offensive end. So right now we're coming off back-to-back -back wins, so the team is looking and feeling much better. But, uh, you know, it's a work in progress. We have a long way to go. Um, well, we started off 0-2, which is unusual for Stone because we're usually, like, really good in the beginning. But we're, we won the last two games, which has been two big ones because we gained confidence off them, and we're on the right track now. So. Um, our sharing game has re really sparked uh, our winning streak. Even though we lost that game, we played like the hardest we ever played, and that like showed us that we can um, play against like a top-notch team. <laughs> that we're we're definitely a running team. We don't have that many outside shooters, and there's me, Leandra, T, Amy, Jess, and like we're all really fast. So um, we're just gonna have to run, run, and run. And we have to get the rebound so yeah. we can start off our um, fast, fast break. break. Junior guard Leandra Busby is one player off to a fast start this season. 
Well, Leandra's an exciting player. She's uh, very quick. Uh, defenses have a hard time staying with her. She's got a great hesitation dribble, which she uses to get herself free to the, to the basket. Um, she's just uh, an exciting player to watch, but she's also um, added some layers to her game. She's got a beautiful pull-up jump shot now. She's playing much more under control, so she still has the speed, she still has the excitement, but she's being much smarter in, um, in her selection of, of plays and um, is playing a real nice team ball right now. Other juniors and sophomores are contributing as well. Uh, Tatiana Thomas has, has really stepped her game up. Again, a lot of what we do depends on our defense, and she's playing terrific defense. Um, Amy Kelly, uh, Jess Greer have both contributed greatly, again, on our, our press. Uh, we do like to use pressure defenses in a game. We might use four, five, six, seven different presses uh, or pressure-type defenses. So. We have two sophomores, uh, Alicia Quinones and um, Bridget Whalen, uh, they're both stepping in, uh, doing a good job. Uh, sometimes they start, sometimes they come off the bench. They are sophomores, so I'm trying not to put too much pressure on them yet, but uh, you know, they've made some big plays already. Uh, they give us some nice size underneath, and um, I expect uh, that they'll continue to improve as the season goes along. But even with the contributions from younger players on the team, Stoughton still relies heavily on its four seniors. Well, obviously, we rely heavily on our two captains. Uh, Kayla Motley's done a great job on the boards. Uh, she's our rock down there, and uh, a lot of, as I said, a lot of our offense comes from our defense, so we rely on her cleaning up on the boards and getting our fast breaks started. Um, and Ashley Medeiros, again, our other captain, is doing a great job for us. Uh, good outside shooter. Uh, she plays the middle on our press, uh, does a lot of work there. Um, so the two of them are, are key to what's going to go on, um, as are other seniors. Um, Emily Kramer and Jaquel Ile, uh, all four seniors, uh, really important because they set the tone. You know, they have uh, the, the, the awareness of what we've done in the past and what we want to do this year. The Stoughton High hockey team returns a youthful roster looking to make improvements this winter. After a 0-4 start to this season, Stoughton beat Foxborough 2-0 in its last game before the winter break. Well, we definitely got off to a slow start, uh, playing, not playing as well defensively as we want to play. Uh, we have enough returning players that we should be playing a little bit better, so hoping to improve on that end of it. Uh, obviously, we've been lacking on the offense too, but it's all relative. We play good defense, eventually it's a good offense, so hopefully getting two goals the other day will certainly help. So. Looking for improvement every game. Uh, we got off to a slow start, and um, we're starting to get back on track. We had a couple injuries right off, right out the gate, so um, that was a little bit tough. And then the guys, there's definitely a lot of uh, camaraderie on this team. Everyone's, I think we've got like probably the best showing we've had for like team breakfasts and dinners. So I mean, the guys definitely care about each other out there, and I think that's a huge key because we're not the most talented team, but as a team, we can work to beat other teams. Stoughton will be looking for more offensive production this year. Just need to work hard. Just everyone just needs to skate, pick it up. Everyone needs to communicate, just, just do what they're told, shoot the puck. Well, the big thing with, with these kids is to get them to think the game. With hockey, it's such a fast game. Actually, with every sport, you really got to think about what you're going to do next before you have to do it, and a lot of these kids are starting to learn that. Uh, it's a struggle for coaches at a time, at time, but the kids are really starting to pick it up. Plus, we are so young. It's unbelievable how young we are. The team is led by senior P.J. Sheehan, a captain and three-year starter in goal. Much of the action in the last couple of years has taken place in Stoughton's end of the ice, and Sheehan keeps Stoughton in the game. He made 918 saves in 20 games last season and already has 198 in five games this winter. I just play it one puck at a time. One goes in, there's nothing I can do about it, so just keep playing. Yeah, I've seen a lot of pucks, and uh, I've seen him mature as a person. Uh, I know he said a few minutes ago how he just takes it one puck at a time. You can't let one get in by and bother him. That wasn't always the case when he was a sophomore. But uh, it, last year and this year, I mean, his, his reaction after he gets scored on is so much better. He's just ready for the next save, and uh, safe to say he's been making lots and lots of saves. His attitude's been great. And him and Brandon have been excellent captains as well as Drew Stefano too, so that helps. Aside from Sheehan and fellow captains, senior Brandon Lima and junior Drew Stefano, key players include PJ's younger brother, Mark Sheehan, the team's top scorer last year, and fellow sophomores, Ben Litwack and Owen Doherty, and freshmen Ryan Chipman, John Lessa, and Jero Brancaccio. Half the team is made up of freshmen and sophomores, so there is a bright outlook for the future. 
I think that I think they're gonna be a good team. Yeah. I think they're really gonna be a good team. There's a lot of a lot of these kids have been playing with each other for a long time. Um, they know they know each other. They go to school with each other. I mean, obviously, but um, I think it'll be a pretty good team. And uh, as long as they stay focused on a team game, I think the sky's the limit for them in the future. Plenty of young guys coming up too. So we're going to close today's show by looking back at the year 2013 in Stoughton Sports at both the high school level and the youth level. So Josh, let's start with you. What was one of your top moments this year in Stoughton Sports? Yeah, Jeff, there were a bunch. Um, I'm sure baseball is obviously an incredible run. Pat will get to that when we get down the line. Um, I'll go with Marcus Milton getting to that 1,000-point plateau. Um, he was kind of under Aaron Calixi's wing a little bit. He was kind of overshadowed a little bit when Aaron was here. So for him to kind of break out and have his moment, get to the 1,000-point mark, it was um, pretty special to watch. Mikey? I mean, I'm a bit biased, of course, but... Being on the wrestling team, just that whole season in general, I mean, it was one of the best seasons we've had in many years. We went undefeated at home. I mean, we had seven wrestlers placed in the top six at Hawks, and we took fifth in Hawks. The year before, we took 11th out of 12 teams in Hawks. I mean, to go from 11th to fifth, it was just a, a great season, and it showed a lot of improvement, obviously, and it was a great season. And Pat? Yeah, like Mike said with the bias, all bias exempt. Um, I think I have to go with the baseball run. Uh, starting off the year 0-3, um, losing some big games. We kind of picked it up the second half of the season. Got a lot of momentum going into the tournament. And um, really put together a nice run, got to the south sectional loss. But there were a lot of big games within that run. And uh, we relied on, um, there's a lot of role players who stepped up. And uh, we had to go 1-9 to the lineup um, to get some big wins. Yeah, I thought one of my favorite games from that run, uh, it wasn't even a playoff game, or I should say favorite moments of that run, was you had a walk-off against uh, Sharon. Yeah. His second, second game against Sharon, and you, you played them three times. Yeah, we played them three times. And uh, the team kind of, uh, I think it was Pat Wright goes up to me and expresses interest in dumping uh, the Gatorade bucket on you yeah. during the post-game interview. And I said, as long as you don't get it on my equipment, that's fine. And uh, did you see it coming? No, or I didn't did see you, it coming at all. Total surprise? Yeah, I mean, the, the whole, the, from the time I hit it to the end of the game, I mean, I was kind of numb the whole time, but I definitely didn't expect that coming. And, and then, of course, in the playoffs with baseball, I mean, you have to, those postseason games are great, but that Greater New Bedford one was just, uh, that was really something else. Uh, you guys had a 7-0 lead yeah. and almost gave it away and had to really hang on there and not, uh, Mike Connolly's home run over that shallow right field yeah. defense, that was pretty big. Yeah, that was huge. I mean, putting up a seven spot, we kind of let down our guard for a little bit, but then um, it was back and forth the whole game, but when M. Con hit that home run, we kind of knew we had it in the bag. And of course, I, we have to mention the football team uh, winning the Division Three Southwest Championship uh, in that game against Oliver Ames. I mean, that would, go, that would be my vote, certainly, for game of the year. Uh, for Stoughton Sports, uh, where they go and defeat Oliver Ames 16 to 14, and you had the late game heroics. You know Jake Gibb leading that game-winning drive. Uh, that drive took most of the fourth quarter, and then kicking uh, the field goal to give Stoughton the lead. And I mean, that was that was just a, that was an awesome moment to to see and Stoughton playing for a chance to go to Gillette Stadium, coming up just short, 14 to 12 to. Plymouth South, so I mean, that, I think football. You know that that was that was a great story for 2013, Definitely. and a great way to wrap up the fall season. And there were some other moments. Uh, I think we have to mention girls basketball. Yeah, making the postseason last year. Yeah, that was a good one. And 27 wins in two seasons for the girls after coming off of a, a five-win season in to the 2010-2011 year, uh, and then uh, boys outdoor. Track, Mikey, you were Hawk on champions. that team, Hawk, Hawk Mock League, Davenport champions. Yeah, I mean, it was a great season. The team led by many good, good athletes, Andrew Valley, Jack Daddy Aiko. I mean, everyone, everyone practiced hard, ran hard, and we, it was a great season. And one of my personal favorites, uh, doesn't necessarily happen on the field, but just every year the volleyball team with their Dig for a Cure match. Uh, what I really love about it is it's not just the volleyball team. It's the whole Stoughton High community kind of rallying around this cause for uh, you know, the American Cancer Society raising funds and the volleyball team with the help of the student council raised almost $2,000 this year and they play that great match with Sharon where everybody is in pink 
and uh, Stoughton won that match this year, and it was at Sharon High, but it doesn't really matter where it is. It's just a, it's a great evening. You also have to give a lot of props to the Stoughton High hockey team uh, for winning the Sportsmanship Award and going back to the getting honored at the Boston Garden for the second straight season. Uh, and Amani Pina uh, was, was honored mm -hmm. at the Boston Garden as well for his individual sportsmanship. Twice. Right, and so, I mean, that's something that, you know, obviously winning is celebrated and gets a lot of attention, but that, that should be something that the hockey team is very proud of, and that was one of the top, that was one of the top moments from 2013 as well. I have to give a, a shout out to the uh, Stoughton 11A Hockamock League uh, All-Stars uh, that play in the Hockamock Summer League. Yep. And they finished as the Eastern Massachusetts uh, Cal Ripken champion yeah. for their for their age group, and also uh, they finished third place at the New England Regional Tournament. And uh, you have the 10 national and 15 American Hockamock Summer League teams winning the title. And uh, Stoughton Youth Lacrosse gets its start this year in 2013. That's a program that a lot of uh, parents are working hard to see lacrosse become one of Stoughton's big sports. And uh, Stoughton D Raiders got to play at Gillette Stadium this fall. Uh, well, late summer, actually. It was the final preseason game. Uh, mm -hmm. That was a lot of fun to see those kids on the field at halftime of a Patriots-Giants mm -hmm. preseason finale. Uh, so I want to thank you guys for uh, joining me today. Again, Josh Brown, Mikey Cardoso, Pat Jackman. Thank you, guys. Thanks, Jeff. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Jeff. Oh, no problem. Thanks for, thanks for coming on. Three great members of the Stoughton High class of 2013. Also want to thank Sean Ellerton for filming today. Thanks for tuning in to this second episode of Sports Night. Make sure you join us next week as we continue to look at winter sports in Stoughton.